Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the course module titled Course Vulnerability with Basic Origin Reflection. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portsvigor.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Go down. Select the learning path. Go down. Select cross origin resource sharing and go down one more time. And select lab number one titled course vulnerability with basic origin reflection. All right, let's get started. This website has an insecure course configuration in that it trusts all origins. To solve the lab, craft some JavaScript that uses course to retrieve the administrator's API key and upload the code to your exploit server. The lab is solved when you successfully submit the administrator's API key. So the target goal, I've written it over here, is to exploit the course misconfiguration in order to retrieve the administrator's API key. So we're targeting an administrator and we're going to use the exploit server in order to send that request to the administrator. You can log into your own account using the following credentials and we've got the credentials right over here. So let's right click and access the lab and open up Burp Suite Community Edition. Hit OK. Close, next, start Burp. And we'll make this a little bit smaller. Go to the proxy tab, set intercept to off, and then click on the HTTP history sub tab. Next, we're going to set Foxy Proxy to send requests to Burp. So now all the requests that I perform in the browser will be sent to Burp first before being sent to the application. So we're going to click on my account and you can see the requests are being intercepted over here. It seems like I've already logged in. So I'm going to log out and log back into the application. So click my account and let's log in with the credentials that we were given. Hit log in. And here we go. So you could see it's making a ton of requests. One of them is the account details request, which is an Ajax request that retrieves the API key of the user. Now we're not interested in the API key of our user account. We're really interested in the API key of the administrator account. So if there is a course misconfiguration in this application, and we know that it's using course because it's using one of the course headers, access control allow credentials header, so the application is definitely making use of uh, the course protocol. And what we're really interested in is getting the administrator's API key. So we're targeting the administrator user. But before we target that user, we need to see if there's a misconfiguration in this application that allows us to exploit a course vulnerability. So let's right click, hit send to repeater. And let's make this a little bit smaller so that we could see both the request and the response. Hit send. And we get a 200 OK message because the application is functioning as expected. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add the origin header. And we're going to add, let's say, randomwebsite.com and see if the application accepts it. 
Now, if the application accepts it, that means the application accepts any random origin on the internet to access its data. If the application does not accept it or throws an error, that means the application only accepts certain domains to access its data. And it's usually just the domain of the site or the subdomains of the site. So let's hit send. And here we go. So we get a 200 OK message. And if we make this a little bit bigger, so if you look over here, we've got both headers that are used in the course protocol that we learned about in the complete guide theory video. The first one is the access control allow origin header, which specifies the origins that are allowed to access the site. In this case, it allows arbitrary origins. So we had said randomwebsite.com. However, if you just said, so let's say malicious website.com, that should work as well. Because what the application is essentially doing is it's dynamically extracting the origin without checking it and reflecting it back to the user in the access control allow origin header. So it essentially allows any site on the internet to access its resources. However, it can only access the public resources. But you could see over here, we've got both headers. So we've got the access control allow origin header and the access control allow credentials header, which allows credentials to be passed in the request. That could be either cookies or authorization headers or certificates. But in this case, the application makes use of a session cookie. So what's going to get passed in the request is session cookies. Having both headers is very dangerous because what that means is not only can you access public resources from the site, but you could also access private resources. And in this case, the private resource that we really want to access is the API key of the administrator user. So we've confirmed that the application allows an arbitrary origin. Let's put that in our notes. So testing for course misconfigurations. Uh, the first thing that I usually test is change the origin to an arbitrary value and see if the application accepts it. In this case, the application accepted it. And so we no longer have to move to our next test use case if this one fails. So if we go back and we look at it over here, it allowed an arbitrary origin to access the site. So let's develop a script that we're going to send to the administrator user. And when the user clicks on the site, we'll exploit this misconfiguration in order to extract the API key of the user. So to do that, let's save this first. And then let's access the course lab 01 HTML document that I've got over here. So first let's initialize the document. So HTML, we'll add the body tag and then the script tag. The first thing that we're going to do is use the XML HTTP request object in order to extract data from a web server. So we'll initialize it. And then we'll initialize the URL of the application, which is this one over here. Let's copy that. This looks good. Next, we're going to make a GET request. So GET. And we're making the request to the URL of the application. So the domain of the application. Plus, we're making a request to the account details page. Okay, next we want the script to send the credentials that are stored in the administrator's browser with the request. So we're going to make use of the with credentials property. So that looks like this with credentials is equal to true. So what this is going to do is it's going to request that the browser send the credentials with the application. Now, if the application does not make use of the access control allow credentials header, the request will be denied. But in this case, it's set to true. And so the request is going to go through. OK. And we're forgetting our semicolons over here. All right, next, we're going to send the request. Now, once we send the request, we need to be able to extract the response of the request. So to do that, we're going to add a function 
So xhr dot on ready state change is equal to this function. So when the state changes of the XML HTTP request, perform this function over here. So if the ready state is equal to done, so we'll say XML HTTP request dot done. then fetch the response of the request. And I keep hitting my caps lock. Here we go. Fetch the response of the request. So that would be xhr.response text. And we're going to append that to the string log key is equal to and add that to the response. Okay, this looks good. So we did this pretty quickly, so I'm gonna go over it again. Essentially what we're doing is we're making a get request to the account details page of the application, and we're asking the browser to send any cookies that the browser has stored with the request, and then we're sending the request. Once the request is sent, we're fetching the response of the request and adding it to the logs of our malicious server, or in this case, our exploit server. So what's gonna happen is in the logs, you'll see this string over here. So slash log question mark key is equal to, and then you'll see the response of the text. All right, let's save this. And we're gonna go to the exploit server to host the script. Now, this is what you're doing for the Academy because the Academy has to have a way in order for you to contact the administrator and have the administrator click on your script. However, if you want to learn how to do this as a proof of concept on your own, stick around to the end of the video. So let's copy this. Put it in the body. This looks good. Click on store exploit. and then deliver exploit to victim. And then let's view the access log of our exploit server. It should have this string over here with the response from the administrator user. And you could see it over here. So it logged the response of the administrator user's account because what's happening with the exploit server is we're sending this uh, script to the administrator and we're saying hey click on this link the administrator clicks on the link and it appears as an empty page however what's happening in the background is this request over here is being made and it's fetching the api key of the administrator so if you go over here you could see we're on the administrator's account so the administrator is the one that clicked on the link and you could see over here that's the api key of the administrator so if we copy it and then go back to the exercise and click on submit solution. This should be the correct answer. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. So essentially, we were able to exploit a course misconfiguration that allowed arbitrary origins to access the site in order to obtain the API key of the administrator user. Now again, we did it using the exploit server of the Web Security Academy that won't be available to you when you're testing applications and so you need to be able to showcase this with your own exploit server and it's really simple all you have to do is click on terminal new terminal and what we're going to do first is we're going to add some content to the space so that it doesn't look suspicious so we're going to say hello world save it and then we're going to host this script using a simple Python server. And the way to do that is Python dash M simple HTTP server. And we're hosting it, let's say on port 5555. Hit send. And now the script is being hosted on localhost on port 5555. All right. So what we're going to tell the administrator and in this case in a real engagement you would ask for the administrator's credentials in order to provide a proof of concept but we don't have credentials to the administrator and so what we're going to do is we're going to fish the user that we were given which is this user over here so assume that you don't have access to this user 
all you do is you tell this user, hey, can you please click on this link? And the link would be HTTPS 127. Actually, in this case, it's HTTP 127.0.0.1 running on port 5555. And the script is course lab01.html. And what the user is going to do is he's going to click on the link and all the user sees is the hello world message. However, what's happening in the background is that the API key of the user, so we've got our user over here, is being locked. And so you could see over here the API key of the user is this over here. Now, if you had administrator credentials, you would be able to provide a proof of concept using uh, the administrator credentials. However, in this case, in order to solve the lab, you actually do need to use the exploit server in the Web Security Academy because that's the only server that has access to the administrator account. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting a course misconfiguration that allowed arbitrary origins to access the site. So we exploited the vulnerability in order to extract the API key of arbitrary users, whether that's the user that was given to us or the administrator of the application. In the next lab, we'll look at another security misconfiguration in the implementation of course rules in order to obtain the API key of the administrator. If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.